Welcome Hornets. Uh, today uh, we're going to be taking a look at uh, graphs and their functions. Um, specifically, we're going to be working and talking about uh, evaluating functions and looking at domain and range and working with transformations. So please be aware that's what this section is going to be about. Uh, it is still a review of your basic algebra uh, from Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Precalculus. So please be aware. So we're going to start off by talking about uh, the difference between functions and relations. Now, I've touched upon this once or, two, once or twice so far for those of you who have been keeping along, so this should not be too difficult. First of all, a function is a very specific type of relation. Just like when we talk about uh, quadrilaterals in geometry, a more specific quadrilateral is a parallelogram. From a parallelogram, we go to a rectangle. A rectangle goes to a square. Well, in the same vein, when we're talking about functions, we actually start with the basic type, which is a relation. A relation is simply a set of points, as we have seen it in your Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. We then get more specific, and we talk about specific functions. Functions have an independent value that we plug in. And when we plug it into the function, these independent values called abscissas, so the x values, have a name. And they are called abscissas. The y values are the dependent variables. Dependent means that it all depends upon what was put into the function in order to get it. So our y values the dependent variable is called the ordinate. So notice this is our independent. This is the dependent. X comes from our domain. So the independent is the domain. And the domain leads us to our y values, and therefore our y values are the range where we can go from the values we plug in. So starting off, we're looking at just our basic uh, information. We have domain and range. We have x values and y values. The x values are the independents. The y values are the dependents. And as a result, when we're looking at a function, we are plugging in our x value to get our y value. Now, please be aware that when we have just an equation, for example, let's take a very simple equation, um, x squared plus 2y equals 1. This is referred to as an explicit, or an implicit, excuse me, an implicit function. So please be aware, what we're talking about is x and y um, are on the same side. We haven't solved for a variable yet. And so we say that y is implicitly in terms of x when we look at this. That's why we call this an implicit formula. Implicit. Then we have something called the um, explicit. Now the explicit formula is y equals one-half, one minus x squared. Notice I have now solved for y in order to find the explicit function. Now the last way we can see these things, not only implicitly or explicitly, but we also have function notation. Now function notation has the advantage of having a fewer words to describe things. For example, if I'm looking at uh, something in the explicit form, I would be saying something to the extent of, what is the value of y that corresponds to x equals 3? That's a lot of words. Instead, we can just simply ask, what is f of 3? Notice, that's a lot easier to say, and that's one of the reasons why we use it. All right, in our next section, we're going to be talking about how do we evaluate functions, and how do we work with transformations? Thank you very much, and 
We'll see you shortly.